um, yeah, what we're going to use for these rails, I'm going to use that 2 by 10 down there. And the reason I'm using that is that we can cut a perfectly straight line on it. There's no question that, you know, I mean, if the board's warped a little bit or you know, something like that, we can fix that by cutting a straight line down then. And then we'll have two halves, and then we'll, you know, cut it to length or cut it to length first. And that's what we'll use here so that we know it's, it doesn't have any of, you know, lumber typically has a little, little something other than perfectly straight. So we're going to cut it so that it is. How high is that beam? It's going to go. It's going to go right here, right up to the edge. Right, right there. Yeah, and then that form is going to just ride on those rails. Now, the um, <laughs> since we have once again such a short space, uh, we're only going to get one move, just to demonstrate how it moves, you know, and how it should move, and it's only going to move about this far, but at least we'll get one move. Okay, so you can see that, you know, we'll put it up here, it's going to come, you know, clear to here or something. And then we're going to build that whole thing, and we're going to pull the shims, slide it along the rails. We grease the top of the rails, just regular engine grease, you know, so that, yeah, you want to yeah, clean up, you want to clean up the edge of this concrete, that's for sure. See all these little nurdles here, you know, let's, let's get it flat ski. If it's, if you give yourself too much, and again, this is so short, we're not going to see this, but we did have an issue on one that we did, you know, where we moved the forms, it was long, and we moved the forms four times or something. And um, the result was, was not perfect, because when you looked up, uh, when we were done, you could tell, you know, where the, oh, you moved the form there, right now, and that course right there, didn't you? You know, don't want that. Well, two, two things to uh, fix that. One, it's because, because of this forgiveness on the edges, you can actually get the thing, you know, racked. You know, maybe it's only an eighth of an inch. When you look up, you see it, you know. And then, and so a fix to that, which I'd like to exercise today somehow, is that we'll, we'll put a two by four or a one by four or something that'll be attached to the outside here of the wall, right in the center, dead center. And there'll be one down here, dead center. And then at the top of the, uh, not the form, but the blocks, that height, six inches above the form, there'll be a string. Mm, just like when you're doing the courses. Well, just, you know, keep us like this. And then the other thing we're going to do with the form is find the dead center and put a, you know, sharpie line down there. So we've got, you know, a little thing down the front and so we can get it perfect so we I mean we're not like I say we're only moving one time in about 10 inches so it's not going to be that bad here so we put these ledgers up here we fastened them to the bond beam with these wedgets that anchor into the concrete we made them perfectly level and we made them perfectly level with each other this is where the uh, form for the barrel vault is going to ride and then I put a uh, a bead of grease on top of the runner just so the form will slide easier okay so that's that's it for that now we're gonna we're gonna get eight shims that match so that when we set the form in here we can shim it and get it perfectly level and get enough shim that we can when we pull them out it drops down enough that we can move the form follow well, just like we did on this one remember we had it shimmed we took the shims out, the form came down, we were able to pull it out. Here, we're going to take the shims out, the form will drop down onto these ledgers, and then we'll be able to slide it along and then put the shims back under it to get it perfect with where it's supposed to be. Now, on a long roof, long barrel, you're going to move uh, the, shim, the, the form several times. Since our room is so short uh, and our form is only about six inches or eight inches shorter than the whole room, uh, we're only going to move it once, and we're not going to move it very far, but it's still the same, same principle. You know, we just I just wanted you to see a moving of the, the form. And then after we get the last rows in, we'll pull those shims, drop the form, and then we can take it out today. 
we run out of time. We don't run out of time. Um, because once we pull those shims out, the forms drops out, there's nothing holding that barrel vault up except the strength of the arch. The mortar that we're gonna use for the bricks on the roof needs to be quite thin and pourable. And the reason for that is we're gonna have little tiny pies in between those six inch high blocks. And we wanna make sure that the mortar gets all the way down. So we're using very fine sand and cement and mixing it thin enough to go down into those joints by virtue of this uh, gun, a caulking gun that uh, you can adjust the size of the hole in uh, your end here and fill it up with whatever your material is and shoot it down in there or the old fashioned uh, and just as effective grout bag, okay, which is just a canvas uh, rubberized on the inside waterproof bag that we hold this together like this, we put the mortar in it and then it's just like a cake decorator. You can squeeze it down into the, into the joints. The visual part of this roof, I mean, we're building a structural roof, but it's also a visual piece of art uh, from inside, okay? We want it to look nice. Uh, we want the joints to be straight. We want our offsets to be good. But the other thing is that when you look at the block that you're gonna put in, if you look at it, this is the side that's gonna be seen, okay? So when you look at the block, you look at both of those sides, and if one's better than the other in appearance, uh, you put that down on the form, because that's what's going to be seen at the end of the project. Uh, again, just like when we laid the blocks in the wall, we want, you know, you can't have too much water, really. Uh, you soak the blocks. Uh, you never laid a mortar on a dry surface. Uh, and again, this has to do with uh, the cure. You want the cure to be as slow as possible and so if the surface that you're putting the mortar on is wet, uh, you will slow the cure of the mortar. Uh, the University of Oklahoma, Charles Graham did a quite a thorough study on uh, how wet it was and what the end up mortar strengths were and all that kind of stuff and a big advocate of wet material. Okay, so it's always wet. We're, uh, we've set this vault form up here uh, that we're going to put the bricks on. In order to be able to move it after the bricks are in place, we have to have it elevated above the rails upon which it's going to run. Top of these rails are greased to make it easier to slide, and then we put little shims under the corners to get it off of that rail so that when the bricks are on, we can pull the shims, the form will come down, and we can slide it to its next position.